thank you, Sherry. I'm glad to be with you. Ask me anything. Okay, we have lots of questions, and I know you have lots of answers today. So let's start off discussing the recent May 14, 2018, violent protests in the Gaza border, resulting in more than 60 plus Palestinian deaths and thousands more injured at the hands of the Israelis. At this time, when the U.S. Embassy is being moved from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem under President Trump. So I know that May 15th, is their Nakba Day, which is the Israeli Independence Day. And for the Palestinians, of course, that's the annual day of commemoration of their displacement, to put it mildly. So what, Robert, do you think was going on in President Trump's head to make this move? What's his end game aside from, I mentioned 25 million and a gentleman by, by the name of Sheldon Adelson? Oh, you heard about the 25 million. Um, Is that true? I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what was reported, that that was Adelson's condition for giving Trump 25 million. Nobody wanted to believe me when I reported in the American Herald Tribune on the 4th of March that the Koreas were not only going to unify, but denuclearize and demilitarize. Now, Everything I know depends on other people. I stand on the shoulders of others. And in this instance, it was Princess Nakamura in Japan and Benjamin Fulford and the heads of two Asian uh, criminal secret societies, one crime family and one secret society. And I visited Japan in February and on the 18th, 19th of February, I heard from them that this was happening. And they're all fans of Donald Trump. They said, he's done it. Now, this would not have happened without Xi Jinping setting the stage and telling Korea, look, the time has come to denuclearize. If you do this, I'm going to treat you like royalty. And that's what he did when Kim visited uh, Beijing. Um, and Donald Trump, God bless him, said, yeah, you're right. We should denuclearize, demilitarize the Koreas. I'm in it. I'm on it. I'm agreeing. I reported that. No one wanted to hear it. Four days later, on the 8th of March, QAnon came out. And there are people who don't like QAnon. I happen to think QAnon is very, very useful, but also speaks in riddles for which I have little patience. Uh, <laughs> and uh, QAnon has also been hijacked. There's been some fake QAnons out there. Bottom line here is I nailed it. I was right. It's happening. Now, fast forward. What if... Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin, and Donald Trump have already agreed they're also going to denuclearize the Middle East. Now, if you denuclearize the Middle East, that means three things. The biggest is you take down the Israeli nuclear program, which is 10 to 100 times bigger than the Iranian nuclear program and paid for by the American taxpayer. That's number one. Number two, you continue to denuclearize Iran. And number three, you remove all nuclear weapons from Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and other places where the U.S. Air Force has positioned them. I think it's going to happen. So are you saying it's kind of like, hey, they just did it. Let's keep it rolling. Now, well, coming back yeah, to the Jerusalem to thing, at its kindest possible interpretation, Jerusalem is a cattle prod up Benjamin Netanyahu's ass that is going to be lit up later. Okay. Well, you know, there, there's a certain order of how things go, but let's talk about Trump. Well, hold on. Maybe, let's, let's, let's come back to Jerusalem. And making, yeah, let's come back to Jerusalem. Yeah, I, the, I, and I the don't embassy. Mean to sound, and, I don't mean to sound glib. But his son-in-law and, you know, the poor Palestinians. Well, we can talk about the son-in-law also how that all plays. Let's come back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is off limits. It's a corpus separatum, cool? Uh, everything from the Balfour Declaration to the United Nations Agreement to every possible agreement. Jerusalem is a separate independent place and neither Israel nor the United States of America have any legal right to put an embassy or a uniformed presence in Jerusalem. Now, obviously, the Zionists will debate that. Bottom line is history is on the side of Jerusalem and peace in the Middle East. It's going to happen. I will 
I will say, as an American citizen, I believe that if an embassy by the U.S. is in Jerusalem by 2024, I'll be very surprised. I expect that to be reversed. I expect as part of a much larger Middle Eastern peace process for Jerusalem to be declared, to be declared a separate international city and all Israeli uniformed forces expelled from Jerusalem. That's where I think we're going. So this thing with, with, um, with Jerusalem, in my view, is a feint. It's meant to put Netanyahu and the neocons and the others off the scent. Um, the whole issue with the son-in-law, Jared Kushner is one of two things. Well, he, uh, he, wait, let me finish this. Jared Kushner is either the senior Chabad supremacist cult representative in the U.S. government betraying his father-in-law every single day, or a loyal son-in-law that the President of the United States is playing against the Chabad supremacist Jews and Netanyahu. And I lean toward the latter. Okay, so many people understand and many people don't understand that it is just the Israelis who no one else has approved on the globe that that the Israeli embassy can go to Jerusalem. No one else was in agreement with that except Trump just making it happen. But the Europeans, you know, all the other countries, the Middle Eastern countries, they want to settle the issue with Jerusalem and who it belongs to or who it's going to be shared by, et cetera, before a move like that can be made. So in a sense, it was almost like a slap in the face also by Trump doing this to other heads of nations well, and many peoples. I, I, I wrote an article, I wrote an article uh, published in the American Herald Tribune which talked about the Korea's, um, the exact title of it, and your people can find everything there. Korea's Unite Denuclearize Middle East Next After a Global Financial Reset. Right now, my understanding from two different sources is that the Rothschilds and the Vatican's have accepted an exit strategy. The Shabbat supremacist cult has not. The Zionists and their neoconservative lapdogs in the United States are still America's worst enemy. Okay? It's not Russia. It's not China. It's not Korea. It's not Iran. It's not Cuba, for crying out loud. America's worst enemy is the Zionists. The Zionists have subverted the American economy. They have subverted the American government. They have subverted the American society. And there is no confusion in anyone's mind that I know of. Zionist bad, Jews good. They're not the same thing. Right. And that's what, you know, some listeners, they just blanket um, Israel. It's anti-Semitism. No, it is not. And by the way, they're not Semitic either. The Khazars. Okay. They come out of Eastern Europe. They were never uprooted from Israel. That is all part of a massive Zionist myth. Okay, so good point. So we're, we're making a big difference here between the Zionist and the Jews, okay? Um, now, you said just a moment ago, Robert, uh, that Trump is doing this, you believe, to throw, off, to throw off the scent, to throw people off track. Now, I can guess what you mean by that, what track, but can you... Uh, embellish a little bit on that comment? I, I, I'd be glad to. And in fact, again, I really emphasize I stand on the shoulders of others. I'm a guy that reads and listens a lot. Uh, I know there are people out there that think I talk too much or, or whatever, but you know, it's, 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 I am who I am. You're a walking uh, encyclopedia. Well, there's no one else that's, that's reviewed 2,500 books in 98 categories and been a spy and, and all these other wonderful things in my life. But we recently published at, um, at Phi Beta Iota, we, we've just published today a Sorsha Fall thing from our, our lead European contributor, Berto Youngman. And I encourage people to go to phibetaiota.net and read that, and also read the three major links from yesterday, um, which included Dave Janda with Greg Hunter on yes. the Iran nuclear deal. I saw Michael that. Michael Sala, Michael Sala doing a very fine job channeling QAnon, and then Benjamin Fulford on Donald Trump's secret Iran plan, which is very, very clever. 
let me boil it down to a nutshell. The Iranian program is not as real or as dangerous as the, Iran as the Israelis would have us believe. Benjamin Netanyahu is a world-class serial liar. He's also a criminal. He should die in jail um, after being properly indicted and investigated and, and so forth. Um, the Iranian deal apparently came about in part because of a multi-billion dollar bribe that Barack Obama paid in cash, a good portion of which stuck to the fingers of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Angela Merkel, uh, and two French presidents, including Macron, who I expect to be indicted for treason very soon in France. I expect the French president to be run out of office uh, in the very near future. Um, but the guy is, by the way, a Satanist, and any proper international tribunal looking into pedophilia would have the president of France today right in its sights. Okay, well, this is not a, this is this is a very sick man, uh, from what I can see. So, bottom line here is that what Trump has done is he set the stage for a much larger, much much larger Middle Eastern. Um, peace deal. Now, let me, let me point out that there are, apart from the need to denuclearize Israel and to terminate all U.S. financial support for Saudi Arabia and Israel, there are seven big things that have to be discussed if we are to achieve peace in the Middle East. Number one is peace between the Sunnis and the Shiites. Now, this NSA dump that Trump did to the Saudis allowed the Wahhabists allowed the Saudi rulers to clean out the princes that were trading in guns, drugs, gold, uh, cash, and small children. And it allowed the Saudi leadership to put the Wahhabists back in a small box. Now, we still have Yemen and Somalia. Those are crimes against humanity. They need to stop. So peace between the Sunnis and the Shiites is, is number one. Number two is the role of Jerusalem and perhaps Mecca as international cities. Number three is the restoration of Palestine. And let me just say that never in history have we had a book this good. This is the absolute Bible on Zionist atrocities against the Palestinians. This book documents the five big lies and the three big thefts of Israel against the Palestinians. This book would stand up in a court of law. Any court of law reading this book would push the Israelis back into the sea. Okay, now I don't want to go that far. I think they should be allowed to keep Tel Aviv and a small portion of the territory around Tel Aviv. But by and large, I think history is going to restore Palestine to the Palestinians. Gandhi has said it before. Palestine is to the Palestinians as France is to the French. It's over. Zionism is over. The Palestines, Palestinians are coming home. And this whole Zionist myth is going away. La, uh, number four, and then five, six, and seven. Number four is the Kurdish Confederacy. The Zionists are arming the Kurds. They're inciting the Kurds to violence against Turkey, violence against Iraq, and violence against Iran. That has to stop. But you have to recognize that the Kurds are a nation. They're not a state. They're living within the borders of three other states, but they are a nation. They're a very vibrant, serious, uh, in-depth, uh, nation, and that needs to be addressed. Um, repatriation of all unemployed Muslims from Europe back to Arabia and reparations for Iraq. The Barcelona agreements in the late 1990s were more bribes for European leaders. The day is going to come when the people of Europe understand that all of their leaders, specifically including Angela Merkel and the prior president of France, are traitors to their own countries. They basically said to the Arab leaders, yes, you give us a big enough bribe, we will take millions of unemployed Muslims and we'll be your safety net, never mind what that does to our ethnic integrity, to our economic and social integrity and so forth. Did you want to interrupt before I gave you the last two? No, you go ahead with the last two. I've got, I've got some stuff that I'll hold. Some okay, questions and then uh, the next six is creation of a post-Western, post-fossil uh, fuel economy with unlimited desalinated water. The Middle East is the perfect place for my vision of open source everything engineering to be applied, starting in Yemen and Somalia. Free solar energy, unlimited desalinated water, free internet, everybody learns free, one cell phone at a time, uh, one cell phone at a time. And, and so that's, that's, it needs to be 
the Middle East needs to be a Manhattan project for energy and water lifting people up from poverty. And last, creation of an open source agency and network, ideally based in Istanbul, a neutral area, uh, which is to say anytime anybody, including Donald Trump, tells a lie, the Middle Eastern open source agency should be able to give the public compelling evidence. This was said, it is a lie, here is the truth. Okay, I've got a couple of miscellaneous things. One, you said that you felt that the a global reset would happen before the denuclearization of many countries. I think no, that's of, of Israel. Look, the bottom line is right now we can't denuclearize Israel unless we first cut the balls off the Chabad Jews. <laughs> Okay. It's that simple. Who are who have been in the past controlling the monetary system? Well, they they they've shared control of the monetary With system. The they, also control, et cetera. they also control Broward County, Florida, which is where the Parkland school shooting was, which was a false flag. Um, so, from what I can see, is Donald Trump again putting the most positive light on it. Donald Trump does appear to be a master strategist, and he does appear to have come to an agreement with General Secretary Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, similar to the agreement that Kennedy and Khrushchev had before Kennedy was assassinated. What I'm trying to say is that the U.S. government, the U.S. media, all of these blabbering pundits, including Fox News, don't have a clue. They don't understand that Donald Trump is making decisions way up here. And he's going direct to his sources. And people used to laugh at first about him being on Twitter. And um, you automatically, your knee-jerk reaction is to laugh along with someone. But if you just take a moment and go, that's actually brilliant. He's talking well, directly to everyone. He's not, because the mainstream, and that is why I'm here talking today with Robert David Yes Steele. and no. And one of the things we can talk about is the Truth Channel. A couple of billionaires have come to me, and I'm hoping to be able to build a Truth Channel because Twitter is a dishonest company. Uh, it, has, it has dropped Donald Trump down. First off, Donald yeah. Trump should be talking to 200 million Americans directly, True. not 47 million, okay? Second, Donald Trump needs to learn how to use polls. My friend John McAfee is getting uh, 47,000 answers when he does a four-part poll. Donald Trump should be doing that on everything. Um, but third and, and most importantly, we want to create a truth channel in which Donald Trump can not only send out trumpets, but he can have a presidential dashboard where 200 million Americans can come back in and the president can see on one dashboard exactly what they're thinking by congressional district, by demographic, by policy issue, by timeline, okay? And I know how to do that. And I'm talking to McAfee, and I'm talking to the guy that owns BitChute, and there's a whole bunch of good stuff that's starting to happen. Uh, and PayPal may be central to this. Uh, PayPal is doing some extraordinarily interesting things to include, it's about to become a clearinghouse for uh, cryptocurrency. So that you can pay in any cryptocurrency and PayPal will pay the merchant in uh, fiat currency. Okay. I don't have warm and fuzzy feelings about PayPal, but. Well, I understand that. And, and what, I have, what I have told the people I'm dealing with is PayPal is going to have to sign a really comprehensive legal agreement that says they will never do a Wikipedia. Okay. So. Um, and by the way, I'm sorry. If PayPal does not agree to that, then OpenID and some other things will just migrate somewhere else. We don't need PayPal, but I'm trying to be effective in 2018. Therefore, it's better if we uh, are able to use existing capabilities. Okay. So before we go on to, I want to talk about the Iran, the old Iran deal and um, the, uh, what's happening right now. But what I, before we move on to that, just to finish off with what's currently happening in, at the Gaza Strip or the Gaza border, I'd like to play really quick, so I'm gonna do a little technical thing here, share screen, uh, just a little clip 